President Trump has been pitching the benefits of hydroxychloroquine in the fight against COVID-19, but a new statement of caution came out yesterday from the leading heart experts in the country warning against the use of drugs like hydroxychloroquine, in this case talking about potentially fatal cardiac effects. So let's discuss the findings about COVID-19 and the heart with Nine News health expert Dr. Paul Coley, who's also a cardiologist. So what is it we learned from uh, this, this group of, uh, of cardiologists as far as their concerns about these medications? So, Tom, both these medications, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, can cause a condition called QT prolongation, which is essentially a fancy way of saying there's an electrical disturbance in the heart that takes too long for the electricity to reset the heart before the next heartbeat. And the problem with this condition is that it can quickly degenerate into a life-threatening arrhythmia or rhythm disturbance. And so what we're talking about here is young, healthy people, potentially, who are taking this medication and can develop these life-threatening arrhythmias that can cause the heart to stop and have sudden cardiac arrest. Now, certainly if you're older or have you know, chronic health problems or are in the ICU, your risk of having QT prolongation is much higher, but often we see it in the young, healthy people, particularly in women. So when the White House is telling us that there's no harm in taking this combination of medications, the health experts really want everybody to know that, that there is harm and potentially life-threatening fatal complications that can occur from taking this combination of medications. So we shouldn't take it unless there's definitely a proven benefit. As we've learned about hydroxychloroquine, people with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis take it. Do they run that same risk as far as that sort of arrhythmia? A uh, very important question. The risk really comes in the first few days of taking the medication. So when you start the medication and you're titrating the dosage or as you're getting more and more doses, it's really important to monitor your QT, which is done with the EKG or an electrocardiogram. So for most people that are on it chronically, if they're not changing the dose, that QT is not going to change too much because their body has come to steady state and sort of at peace with the medication. But when you're starting the medication or giving it for the first time, that's when you can really have those risk of complications. We talk about COVID-19 pile as a, as a lung virus, but what does it do to the heart as well? You know, Tom, it's so fascinating. We're learning more and more about this virus. And what we've learned recently is that the receptors called the ACE2 receptors, which the virus uses to get into the lungs, are also present on the heart and the blood vessels. So that means the virus is directly getting into the heart cells. And for some people, that means direct damage to the heart muscle, which can manifest as heart attacks or heart failure. And for other people, it just means that as part of the the immune system's reaction to the virus, they can get damage to the heart muscle or get arrhythmias. Now, interestingly, we're seeing that a small subset of patients will present with heart attack symptoms like chest pain instead of the fever, cough, and shortness of breath that we've been talking about so much. So this has really heightened our awareness that this is a multi-system virus. It's not just the lungs. It can affect other systems. We've also found the presence of these receptors on the kidneys and the intestines as well. And do, do these cardiac effects we're seeing from COVID-19, are, are these only with, for patients who've had prior heart disease? And, you know, and that's the scary part. Like, of course, the risk is the highest in those patients that have had prior heart disease of having these cardiac complications like heart attacks or heart failure. But we, what we found is that 7% of all COVID patients had evidence of damage to their heart. And 12% of these, so more than 1 in 10 people who had damage to their heart, were people that never had heart disease before. And that came as a real surprise. A lot we're learning. Uh, Dr. Coley, it's always good to talk with you. Thanks again. We're turning